Galera do Heavy Culture, uma boa, uma boa noite, uma boa tarde, conexão maluca de sempre, Brasil, Portugal, Alemanha, é, hoje, numa terça-feira habitual, a gente está aí com um convidado aí muito, muito é, especial aí, e a gente vai bater um papo com ele, Valdemar Soritscha. Welcome, Valdemar. Welcome okay. to Ready Culture. How is always welcome in Portuguese? I only know saúde. Seja bem-vindo. <risos> Seja bem-vindo, all right. <risos> Seja bem-vindo, Ivan, também. Opa, Ivan. prazer estar aqui conosco. Seja bem-vindo, Miguel. Miguel, Portugal Connection. Portugal e Connection. Portugal Connection. Capiloto Connection. Um, <risos> pessoal, clica no... No sininho, Ivan, aí fala... Clica no sininho aí, faz a, faz, a, faz a inscrição no canal, compartilha com a gente aí. Semana... Oi. Vai lá, o... mete bala compartilha, aí. Compartilha, faz tudo o que tem que fazer aí. Faz tudo aí. que tem que fazer, participa com a gente, vai lá, bota o canal para frente aí. Também, se, se quiserem dar sugestão de, de, de quem vocês querem que, que a gente entre em contato. Alguns são mais acessíveis, outros nem tanto, mas a gente vai sempre tentar. E é, hoje semana... a gente tá com um cara que gravou aí álbuns seminais, né? E semana passada, só para reforçar, né? Vamos fazer um flashback rápido. Ah, é? Teve Verdade. com Mr. Frank Blackfire do Sodom. Que mandou um abraço e, pro Valdemar. E mandou um abraço pro Valdemar. Podia abrir aí, Miguel. Falando disso, né? Por gentileza. Claro que sim, claro que sim. Um, é, é um prazer estar, estar no Heavy Culture e não, não posso deixar de, de dizer algo que estávamos a conversar em off com o Valdemar, em que ele dizia que o Heavy Culture não tem muito tempo mas tem tido convidados de luxo e para nós que o é um que fazemos é um elogio enorme e ter alguém como o Valdemar a dizer isto é, é, é algo bastante interessante e, e, e dá vontade até de continuar e de fazer mais. Por isso vamos dizer em português que devem colocar as vossas perguntas em inglês caso consigam, se não conseguirem podem fazer em português, que nós traduzimos o melhor possível, e, e as vossas perguntas serão colocadas ao Valdemar, que é um monstro musical, tanto na área de, de, de instrumentista como também de, de produção, não é? So, Valdemar, now we speak English, otherwise uh, there are only a few words that you understand in Portuguese, we already started with a, a big saúde, and uh, we, we can do it again, saúde. Um, and uh, we have to start by by uh, recalling one message from uh, Frank Blackfire that sent a, a big hug to you um, on the last uh, on the last um, live stream we we were with uh, with Frank and uh, full of respect for your work and uh, was it last as, week wasn't it right sorry was it last week wasn't it yes indeed yeah. indeed and uh, he, he sent you a big hug uh, and uh, Lots of respect. But so, with mask, right? Sorry? But with mask. Of course. The, only only masked hugs are allowed. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, we are very, very pleased to have you, uh, you know, on Heavy Culture ranks. Uh, we are trying to do our best. And uh, we hope that everything is okay with you and your family. And... Uh, Let me ask you, starting by asking you something about these uh, crazy times. At this point, uh, it is impossible not to ask, um, how have you been feeling your, you know, your free time in this uh, gro global madness uh, due to the pandemic? How have you been doing things or what have you been doing? Well, first of all, <laughs> um, the madness is... Uh, more madness than uh, that you could even expect because you know um my life uh, is based uh, on everything what has to do with uh, music art and and uh, besides uh, producing bands besides my own bands that i'm uh, in i also do um, many jobs um as a uh, sound engineer for live shows um Very close to where I live is a very famous place, uh, not just in Germany, but in whole Europe. And I would even say uh, worldwide, because I think besides Metallica, everybody played here. Metallica was already too big. 
but it calls Zeche Bochum and uh, and since few years I'm working there and uh, since Corona came, uh, like everything was gone, not just a small part of my job, uh, 100%, everything that I'm doing in my life uh, just went apart. And uh, that brings you first um, also in a in kind of metal illness that uh, that you you want you know I'm not a lazy person at all I'm I'm a person who is doing uh, I can when I start once I can stop of uh, making uh, whatever I do if I um, making paintings or if I make music once I start I I just don't stop because I really love what I'm doing I'm not doing this for for the question of uh, honor of, or respect, you know, people who like my things, I appreciate this, but people who doesn't, I don't care much when I would always take care about everybody's opinion about me. I am who I am. And uh, if you if you don't agree, you know, like important is respect for people to uh, to, to respect people but never lose yourself in what you are. You, you shouldn't be aggressive or, or lying person to another people. You should treat everybody like you would be like to treat by themselves too. But uh, you shouldn't be like a fucking asshole who is licking asses of other people, who is telling just things that people want to hear from you. So um, the, the way of respect, but the way of being yourself is 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 the important thing of, of everything in our life and losing everything you have is like losing all your life you 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 don't feel respected for what you do you don't feel like the politicians or everybody else uh, is respected you know like my my words are um, we said something here, I, I don't know how you call it in English, but uh, uh, we are not uh, in, in the system. We are, we are not that important as musicians in the system. Everybody else is more important, you know, like now, for example, we have a completely lockdown since already, um, uh, since, uh, what was it, November or latest in December. So we already at least three or three and a half months again in the second lockdown but what many people forget we still be in the first one we didn't have this break in the summer we couldn't make shows we couldn't go on stage and play in front of people and uh, we are still be in the first uh, lockdown but now it's the second one and uh, next week um the hairdressers the opening already and hairdressers, I mean, nothing against head, hairdressers. I don't need my so much. Actually, I never go to hairdresser, but uh, <laughs> but uh, just to explain, um, this is something that the politics and people want to call us. This is important for our day life. This is something important. So now I'm asking you, um, when this is much more important than us as a mu musicians, explain me one point, why we still, in every country in this world, singing proud our national anthem with lyrics, they are hundreds years of old, with music, which is hundred years of old, why are we going to museum to see art, which was made already thousands of years ago, when this, is something that doesn't matter to humanity, but hairdressers, right? I understand the problems with uh, with the infections and with everything, but please fucking give us some respect for what we really are and not for what you want us to see. Sorry to say this, but these fucking bastards, you know, they not even thinking about what they are doing to us. And I have to say also one thing, because when you don't, allowed to go for vacation people are already like oh i have no reason to live anymore you know vacation like they can't spend one year without doing this i am not working for one year and i want to do it 
And those people are crying more because of that small thing. I think you can only wake them up when you when you will make at least one month. I think one month would be enough. And you forbid everyone, if this is internet, if this is TV, if this is radio, if this is anything else, to play for one month, no music, show no art, and show no uh, poems and anything like this. So life will be for just one month worldwide uh, artless. I think what people will do then, I think most of people will really go crazy. But because we have all the portals that you go on internet, you download songs anytime you want, people lost totally the respect to what we are doing really, right? And this is something that at times like Corona, it shows you really the face of, uh, of how people, on the one side, as I say, with the, with the National Athens, everybody standing proud and singing this National Athens, but then when it calls for money, people just don't fucking care. And that's uh, uh, the And by the way, imagine you would live in a different country than Germany. I would tell you that it would be really worse than that. Um, we 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 have total respect for for artists. So we are talking about music. It's usually what we do, but we have to look also for the you know the the, the problem worldwide. And it's our belief that um, in this case. In Germany is not so bad as it is in in countries like Portugal or even Brazil where things for artists are even worse even worse but we all do respect everyone and as we were talking before our live session so we were talking about football we don't need football to live we can live without it but they are still playing and doing everything they do they it's it's a job and they do it why money talks it's always like that my job and is music you know of course <laughs> of is course it's so easy to say yeah this is this is their job yes this is their job but my job is music of course Why are you putting me away of making what i do and i'm making much more people happy maybe with this what i'm doing than maybe football i wouldn't i wouldn't you know i wouldn't compare because this is too much to compare to everything also to compare to to countries each country is taking um, their own rules. I, I remember when Brazil, I don't want to go with names at all, but I remember seeing like um, in, the first, in, in the first month, people, many people didn't care much about this. They thought this is like, a, we, we believe in a, our religion, so nothing really will happen bad to us, which is so wrong, you know, like, uh, uh, a sickness, a pandemic, is something that uh, we all should take care about this, not because it might hurt us, but uh, what is the worst? When you know that you're giving this to, to other people, uh, to, to older, younger people, and this is something why we should care, not only because it, it can hit us, because we shouldn't be this egoistic and think like, oh, it will not come to me but it can come to everyone around you, you know? Yes. And this is, this is the main point. We should be on this planet, because this is this one planet, uh, in, in, in moments like this, uh, supporting each other and not, and, and, and not giving not shit about all this and thinking like, well, it will not happen to me. I'm, I'm too strong for this. I have good body. Yeah, you might have this, but not hundreds of other who lives in the same street. A different, different, um, uh, you know, just finishing this virus stuff, you know, uh, there are lots of, um, uh, I don't know how to say it in English, but it's a different stirp of, of this Corona. Uh, we, are, we are having the Brazilian one, the English one, also yeah. the, the South African one, and also California one. So it's quite different everywhere. And this will be evolving. But uh, we also have to, to understand one thing. Everybody needs something to live and to survive. And let's, let's imagine that, as you said, if everyone would go artless for a month, 
uh, this will be chaotic as we people believe. Will go, people I will go I know, mad. but this is, this is at least something that keeps us in moments like this. You know, like you still have art for yourself. And I don't know if there's anybody out there that doesn't feel good and doesn't take at the place of art, of music or something to, uh, because this is relief for, for you inside. And uh, not the car, not, not, the, not the toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, did you have this bullshit there too? That people back in the first month start to buy the toilet paper? Some and some people were crazy. On. It was global. So my, my answer was always, you see, the pandemic has to come to show how many assholes are out there. So so many toilet paper we need. Uh, as I I think um, the problem is when this pandemic is over. I believe that people will take something like two or three months and they forget it all, unfortunately. And that's the problem because this situation should help us to, you know, to find the, 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 best, play, the best things we have in life, like family, friends, you know, going to concerts. How oh, I miss to go to a concert and, and, and take this wall of sound through me, you know. Uh, it's unbelievable because... This is life, not uh, as you said before, something like having a car or a bigger, a bigger house, or you know, to show to show your neighbor that you you are better than him. This is crazy. I hope that people will still remember this. This is very romantic. You say that people. I see many people. They already inside middle of the pandemic don't care. They want to see first them. And for them, this pandemic, as, as far they're not included, it doesn't exist. They go on streets and making demonstration against, we are living in a free country, you can't uh, take all this of us. Like, yes, you, you, you can't, but uh, you must know that with you behave, uh, you're killing uh, people like me. You, you keep, because, because of this, we will never get rid of this. When, when we don't stop together. And I do not believe that something will change uh, after because I see that it doesn't even change when we're having it. Yeah, yeah. There are Maybe the lot, first three months, of... you know, like when everybody was in shock because uh, the last pandemic that we have in this case uh, was the uh, uh, Spanish flu. Was it Spanish flu? Yeah, 1920. In, uh, uh, 1918, yeah. Yeah. And um, this, is, this is already so far away. So um, that was in the first few months was like a big shock for everyone. And maybe those was the three months that people were caring much more about everything else. But already after a few months, People start to live their own lives, and people, and people just never learn. I mean, why we still have wars? Because people don't learn. You just look in a history, and you see when you act like this, when you do this, this and this will be the result, and you know it. And and why is all this repeating and repeating? The the, the question people, is that when when uh, the the major problem is that, that the younger people. I believe that it's the younger people who are carrying the problem into people's homes. And when a grandfather or even a father says something to its son or, or grandson, hey, you should do this because of this, because of that. And they will say, oh, no, you, there's a, a generation gap between us. You don't understand. And that's the main issue. I remember when my father used to tell me something when I was a teen, I was like, oh, there yeah, this comes is what again. I want to say. I mean, um, this yeah. is this is how life is, you know. <laughs> I I understand also the young people. I mean, they they don't understand the point, and they they feel like um, sixteen or seventeen. I will be only once in my life, you know. This is like a special uh, special age that only happened once. I think when you're over forty. Uh, it's not that much important if you're 42 or 45 as, as much as you feel healthy. But when you're 15 or 18, those are like a very special ages. And, you know, I, I can very much believe that they have also a lot of things to suffer with 
because um, they feel like um, actually the youth, it, it is stolen from them. And uh, I can understand this, even when sometimes it's, you know, uh, for other people not to believe, like, please take care of, of everybody else. But uh, did we do this when we were young? I, I don't think so. Okay, so let's try to, to look forward uh, with, with hope, at least. Uh, let's look at the, uh, at, um, the solution and not only the problem. And uh, there's, there are lots of vaccines being, you know, um, everywhere for everyone to take them and uh, to, to free ourselves again from, from being locked in lockdown. So we, we would like to, to know starting from this point talking about music and looking forward and and being happy uh, you know imagining that everything will go to normal at least normal and we can see again um our favorite bands playing live um you know hang out with friends change some music ideas with with lots of people and uh, i have a i have a, a question it's kind of a, a loose question uh, you know a loose one to, to, to start uh, our conversation about music, Valdemar, if you don't mind. Um, and uh, this one, it hasn't to do with music in any way. So um, we can see that you are, you know, a, a specialist in, in surface design besides music. Uh, you are, you know, you are painting a lot of mugs. And I, I saw that and I was like, whoa, this is a cool job. Um, is that a, a need for survival or a need to to you know to stall time? A mox is one thing, you know. Like I'm painting, uh, uh, I make paintings already. Oh, I just have to show. This is one of my paintings that I put on merchandise. It's fucking corona. corona. Fucking corona, indeed. <laughs> like cool. I have uh, many of paintings and pictures that I made with uh, all the corona viruses and all this stuff. And I like this one. I, I have much more. And I started also to make uh, um, merchandise out of it, which is also a, a risk in the beginning because I have to pre-order something. And you never know if, if on the end it's going to sell with the cops because I always like to paint. And I have to think about something, what I can do through internet, what I, because also even my guitar lessons went so down because uh, because this is a personal contact and everything else. So I start to think, what can I do? And uh, I earlier I was doing the cops uh, just um, for birthday for my mom. I said before I before I I don't like you know like to give present just because it's needed to. When I when I give a present for birthday or for for Christmas, then it needs to be something. Then I feel that somebody is happy with this, because when I just buy bullshit that somebody else will, what the fuck should I do with this? <clears throat> this is not a point of of making presents. With presents, you should make somebody happy, or you just leave it. Presents are not for uh, for like a kind of um, I have to do it. You just you just make someone happy with. So before I give nothing, I started also to make this with the cups, and then I came with the idea: why not just uh, just start to sell them? Well, money is the one point, of course, but which is really much much more important. Since I'm doing this, and I see uh, the faces when people posting uh, the pictures and like. Uh, you made me so happy. This is so awesome. And that is, in the end, much more important that you feel that what you are doing, uh, people like, like with music, that uh, that this is what you do is appreciated by people. And this is not uh, a question of money, which is also important, but much more is uh, the feeling inside that you feel be respected as human again, as somebody who who can do so many things and who is just waiting that people are seeing. And I, I wasn't prepared that you asked me this question, but I was thinking that you might do it. And uh, my newest is also... Oh, grip, man. 
can you send that to Portugal? <laughs> are you <laughs> selling? Are you selling them to, uh, you know, other, worldwide? Yeah. Okay. But so uh, let us know the, the the place where we can find them. Um, no, no. Uh, I mean, I'm. This is something that I have to explain. I do each one personal. So it's not uh, that I make 15 of them uh, and you just buy number 14. Let's imagine Let's imagine that, that I would contact you, Valdemar, and I would say, I need one for Portugal, for me, Miguel. Yes. yes. You, you have to know that I, I sent already worldwide, um, also to USA, also to South America, and um, also within Europe to many, many countries. The only stupid thing is that the, because, you know, like, um, this is a special size, it's not small. So I, the, the packaging is very, very expensive. Europe is okay, but, you know, like overseas, uh, yes. the packaging is very, very expensive for one cup. And so when you put together the price I'm taking plus the, 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 the shipping, Ugh, I can understand when people say like mm, that is too much. So this, as I try to say always, um, when you're interested, try to get a few more people because then you share just one time a package. And for me, it's also that I'm just doing this once. When when I have ten orders and ten people want, I have to package them ten times. When someone order ten, I have to do it just once. Okay. Well, look, Ivan has a question because he was he was going to ask something. Yeah. Maybe a mug, maybe a cup or a mug. <laughs> yeah. Eu queria fazer uma pergunta para ele que qual era a banda que ele estava trabalhando quando deu a pandemia, quando começou a pandemia. Se você estava trabalhando com alguma banda, produzindo alguém. Okay. So Ivan is is asking something about you know getting back to the studio and with music. Uh, let us know uh, if you were working with with any band. Uh, when the pandemic struck um, worldwide? Of course. <laughs> uh, um, I'm working... I mean, this is something that, that I love to do because not um, not always my music is something that counts. I, I like also to give, uh, I just say, new bands, but also like bands they already for 20 years in a in, in business um, always try to give uh, my view of music and uh, as a producer try to help to make an album better I always uh, say it doesn't matter how good the last record was I want always with each band to get one at least one step above when not even two like I will not uh, accept to um, to say Ah, the last record was nice, was so great, I don't know if we can top it. No, this is something um, that with everything, it's like with football player, I did last week such a great goal, so I don't need to make training anymore because I will never make such a great. The point is, you have always to, uh, to, to don't see any standard, to always try to give uh, you the opportunity to be always better and to work on this. So... Um, For me, it's important only that I have to like this band. I have to like the music of the band, so I understand where to guide them. But also, I like to. Uh, I need to like the people. I don't think so that I could be in a studio for four weeks when I feel that the guys are stupid assholes. You know, like this. This whole package uh, supposed to be uh, working with everybody. Same with the band; they need to be, to be, uh, to be happy to work with me and not seeing me like a kind of enemy for them. Because But I'm, I'm, saying, I'm sure, I'm sure that you already have some some stories about some guys that went to the studio and were not so correct. Is that right? I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's that's a, a great answer. Um, looking at the, at the studio point of view and as a producer, Valdemar, let us know. Of course, you can still work with analog system, but the main um, system that you are using at the at the you know at the present is is it digital or analogic? Digital. This is 
to be honest, in a moment, it's not even it's not even possible to make analog anymore. It is it will be much too expensive. You know, like these old tapes, you can actually buy them anymore. And uh, when you buy them, they will be so expensive. Uh, people don't have this uh, budget anymore, and uh, then you have the machine. I mean, who who still have those machine? And you have always to, uh, you know, say like um, to, to change things. You know, like to repair those uh, those things are uh, are already like 50, 60, 60 years old. And you always need to uh, be patient with 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 those uh, technology, and um, even you know, I, I'm proud and I'm very happy that that I started work with analog. So I know very very well how crazy it was those times. That today is uh, totally normal. Sometimes I think that people like bands they're not even able to to record an album anymore like we used to do it in the in the 80s like go to the studio and really record live the guitar they think they just record uh, one rip and please copy it yeah. for 20 times and uh, when i hear productions like this i don't feel any life there anymore they sound like they've been written with a keyboard and not with a guitar I've been also once um, as a studio musician. As I say, I never use names. I can say this private, but never in public, because I don't see this is the right thing to say something negative about somebody else or say some stories that doesn't belong in the public. But I remember once that I was as a studio musician uh, uh, recording an album. And there was like an acoustic part that I played with uh, two or three guitars. And I remember that it was so exact. So only on one note, I changed the finger like one millisecond earlier than on, on, on the other guitar. And that guy wants me to uh, re-record this. Uh, we do it new. And at this moment, I started to get pissed. Like, look, I'm a perfectionist by myself. And uh, I always want the best. But what you want, this is no more music. Why are you calling me to record the guitars when on the end you want to have a fucking keyboard on it and not a guitar? When you want to have a guitar, in a guitar you need the life. You know, I always say to people, this is one of my uh, first words when I start a production with a band. I say, like, you see all these knobs on this mixing board. They are hundreds, thousands of knobs. They are effects and everything else. And you, you, you can change the, the sound of it, but never the feeling. The feeling, it starts here, and only here you can create it. And everything else just makes you this feeling sounds more warm, more cold, or whatever you want, but with these other uh, helpful things, you will never be able to change the feeling. That's that's what makes uh, music human. So, again, with Brazil, um, quem é que vai primeiro? É o Jorge ou o Ivan? Pode ser? Vai. Ele produziu algumas bandas que não mudaram muito, muito o estilo, tipo um Lasher, que sempre se manteve bem firme no estilo. Mas ele produziu bandas como o Tiamat e o Samael, que mudou drasticamente. E ele esteve sempre acompanhando essas mudanças. Qual é o desafio de um produtor acompanhar uma banda que nunca um álbum é igual ao outro? Ok, good question from, from Ivan. So he's, he, he's talking about some bands I that... I thought uh, it's a good question. It sounded like a good question, you know? It is, it is. And, and he, <laughs> he, 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 he made it perfectly. So he, he asked something about... He, he, starting from, from saying that uh, you already work with bands that never changed a lot their sound, but some others never did a, an album like the, the, the one in the past. So... Sorry for my mic. It's my game. Pop, pop, pop. <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, so they, they are. There are some bands like Time at Samael and, and some others that always change the, their sound from album to album. So, what's your perspective on this and the challenge that you meet when you you have to work like that? The most important is 
as I already said in the beginning, to never lose yourself. When this is something that uh, that is going with you, you, you change. I mean, you. I would say that way. You you never really change personality. When you have one, I say when you have one, uh, you have it already with eighteen, but maybe you still think about uh, some other things different than when you do with forty or fifty. But the personality, being like a helpful person, being an asshole, you create already with a young uh, time. But with with music, when this is something natural goes with you, then this is for sure the right way. But because in the first place, you have to be happy with what you do, because only when your soul, when your heart is inside of the music, then it sounds right. When you just don't change the sound because you say like, yeah, because our fans want to hear for the 35th times the same song just with a different title. Um, this is, in my opinion, more wrong than, than to change the style when it still represents you. Of course, when you just do something because you think, oh, I might be more successful with this kind of music, um, then also this is very wrong. But when this is something that it goes with your nature, then, then this is definitely the right way. Okay, so now Jorge is ready for, for his question. Uh, aproveitando o gancho do Tiamat, né? Uh, ele produziu ali o, o, um álbum que eu acho um dos melhores lançamentos do, dos anos 90, que se chama Wild Honey 94, né? Eu perguntar para ele assim, é uma dúvida que eu tinha assim, tipo assim, que tipo de drogas eles consumiram para produzir aquele disco? Porque realmente é um disco sensacional para mim, na minha humilde opinião. Um dos melhores discos produzidos nos anos 90. So you have é desafiador, a, né? É um álbum desafiador. You, you have a fan of uh, Wild Honey from Tiamat uh, for for Jorge's uh, one of the best albums released in 94 and uh, is 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 asking What do you mean in 94 only? Uh, <laughs> uh, and he's asking What kind of substances were they taking to get an album like that? You mean the drugs we took or what? Sure. <laughs> you, you, know, you, you must know, uh, I, I, I'm, I, I don't take drugs. This is, this is true. Uh, I wouldn't say that I didn't try, but uh, it didn't feel like the right thing for me. My drug is uh, art, music, and uh, this is something that I that I'm in my element. Uh, the, the, I, I can explain this because uh, this is something that uh, uh, also Johan and we talk uh, very, very clearly about this. Um, at this time, um, Tiamat also broke, almost broke up. Actually, I think they even broke up. And only Robert, uh, who is still my friend, who is was the singer for despair and uh basically because of despair and all this the record company uh, century media started to exist and um and i produced uh, the astral slip then clouds and then um supposed to come the next one and the band just didn't didn't see a way which music they want to do The one guy was more for this. The one, I mean, like uh, many bands uh, after, um, I don't know, five, six years being together, uh, having the same problem. So they couldn't like really make a decision uh, which music they want to do. And the band almost broke up until Robert asked me, Valdemar, you have to fly to Sweden and, uh, and try to get the guys back on where they come from. And that was a period that Johan and uh, Johnny was the bass player. They was very into Pink Floyd. I mean, way too much into Pink Floyd. And uh, they want to change all the music under the name Tiamat um, too, too far away. Uh, and I was the part who, who tried to get them to your point. But please, um, this is... 
this is something that nobody will understand this step and you can't tell me that uh, what you have done two years ago you hate right now that that everything you've done in your life is no more existible for you that only now pink floyd i say like also this this time will pass by and you might have in i don't know in 10 years uh, police or somebody else would you always like to sound like a band you into it right now when you have already your own roots please let us try with this new album to find a way to have a mixture between your past and what you call your future. And I think that was the, the biggest um, goal on this album. The, the, the guys started to get more open for the past and I was open also to what they really want to do for, um, for this, just say this more hippie style and um, also the sound was not an accident. I, I had the feeling that, that this album shouldn't sound like a modern uh, 94 or 95 metal album. It should have something of this uh, old hard rock uh, band sounds with, with, with drums. And I think this, this whole mixture made it uh, what it actually... When, when we started on this, I, I also didn't know how it's going to end. When compared to many other things, I know already from the first songs when I see it. But because uh, those guys wasn't sure by themselves, it was like a kind of step-by-step -step work. And each song was uh, like a new uh, new way of finding this, this style for what actually Wild Honey ended with. Um, so they, they asked something about uh, Tiamat and I would like to, to ask something about the, the first big surprise uh, I had from, from, you know, from your side after listening to Despair. What a great, great band. Uh, and I, I miss it because we feel that um, it had a, a personal sound. It had, it had an identity. And uh, my f big first surprise was this one um oh, sorry um this one power of venus twin so this this was my when i listened to the first song on the radio i was like oh my fucking god i need this yesterday and uh, uh, listening to voodoo cult uh, i have to ask you was it um um, you know, a way to to try to do something different with with some guys, known guys from bands, that you had the idea of grabbing someone like uh, like uh, Dave, like Gus from from a different kind of music, uh, and also Jason. So you you, no, you have now 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 you now you're jumping. I mean, Voodoo Cult and Group Inc. Those has nothing to do together. I know, I know, but because they are in different times. I met Dave. The story was that I um, know, I know. I was going to jump the, the story. Like, was it the uh, uh, voodoo cult? Was it the first experience that made you create um, Grip Incorporated later? That was the question. No, that was be, when when voodoo cult wouldn't be there. I would probably never met in person Dave Lombardo, or at least not this way. And because uh, of Voodoo Cult, I met Dave. I explain you a little bit uh, far away. I already uh, had a name as a producer, but this time because uh, with bands like Unleashed or Tiamat and even The Gathering, or there was already before uh, Grip Inc. and Voodoo Cult um, some productions that I've done. They already been uh, very successful and very popular in the metal scene. So this guy Philip Boa, who was the guy who whose idea it was, he was a very successful in his own music, like an industrial alternative rock. But he was also a big metal fan, and uh, he wants to do once a metal album. And to make it um, that people don't laugh at him like, oh, this guy is making a metal album because many people are doing shit like this um, to make money with this. And I was actually 
totally against. I said like, he is making so much money with uh, with his own stupid music. He should leave me alone. I will not let him introduce to my music, you know? And I was against. And uh, many people has to tell me, Valdemar, please at least meet this guy. And uh, I met him. He started to play for me the songs um, that he was thinking of. And I was very surprised, positive. I felt like, these songs are very, very good. And I remember that Philip uh, looked like he was more nervous meeting me than I was <laughs> nervous of meeting Philip. And he was very, I mean, he was with his regular band. Uh, they were playing his every day on radio. He was very, very popular in Germany. And, um, and of course, how stupid I was, I put straight my cassette, if everybody knows what this is, what cassette is. A there tape. was a small tape that you put in a player and he was pushing play and he was playing your songs. And you didn't skip like today from one to another. You have to rewind or fast forward. So when you want to put from first song to the sixth one, it will take you probably like five minutes to fast forward this. <laughs> so mostly you've been listening to the whole album and not like today, people are skipping already after five seconds, you know? But Remember okay. the pencil or the pencil or the pen oh. to you know to make it. Of course, and uh, wait one. I have a what? question to you about that. Uh, how do you see the future of music um, regarding the the, the physical, um, you know, the physical things that we can grab to? Será que ele está a ouvir? Oh, Miguel, ele foi buscar. Eu acho que ele foi buscar uma cassete. Yeah, just um, because uh, we are talking about this. I, I was asking uh, what you think about the future of oh. music. Oh, TDK, uh, TDK. So, so I was production, Samuel Munspel. So this oh. is this is a cassette. Is that is that a master? No, this is a, oh. <laughs> this is a demo from the rehearsal. Munspel again. Okay. Ooh, how did that thing? But um, I have here also Wild, Do you have Wild Honey demo tape from the rehearsal. Oh, cool. And in so, Food I still have all this stuff, but I want, I want to say that um, uh, I played first, uh, to Philip um, the songs I just wrote uh, one day before. And Philip was also totally like, wow, they sound so great. Like when you will produce this album, when I wish that you will say yes, I would like to have those two songs from you on the Voodoo Cult album. Uh, one of my two songs is straight the opener, this Killer Patrol. And when I was flying to Met Day, he said straight to me at the first day when we start to uh, rehearse uh, the songs, because I was not only the producer, I was also the guitar player for this guitar band player. too. So I start to rehearse before he went to the studio. And Dave told me already in the first day, you know, Valdemar, um, I like the songs, but especially two. I, I said definitely yes to this project because I love those two songs. And I say like, oh, Dave, uh, my songs, I wrote them. He asked me straight at the first day if I would like to make with him a new band. And that ah. was the beginning of gripping. Cool, cool. And and how, 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 from whom came the idea of Gus, a guy from, from hardcore punk, to, to join gripping? Well, he was, already, he was already before me there. But they, uh, the, the name Grip Inc. wasn't there before. When I came, um, actually, when I came to uh, to Grip Inc. to the first beginning time, that was straight after Dave uh, left Slayer or was made to leave Slayer, and um, Dave started his new band. Uh, uh, the guitar player was Bobby Gustafson for, uh, from from Overkill. I mean, I well, don't know it's... if you know that just a few years ago I was playing with Overkill. I was replacing Dave that has to go to his home. So even then, I still have something to do Gustav with. Gustav is playing now with uh, with the violence. Yes. Okay. 
but um, yeah, when I came to this band, uh, Bobby Gustafson was on the guitar and Gus was already the singer, but the music style was totally different and I did not agree too much and we started to basically everything from from the beginning and I remember I felt a little bit um, not pleased with this but that was my decision um, they kind of straight fall in love in, in the way I'm playing guitar and uh, as I say he asked me immediately if I would like to join the band and not even one month later he basically yeah, uh, said goodbye to Bobby and says like uh, the way Valdemar is playing is as I see my future with uh, with this kind of guitar. And that was for the first time in my life that I was the only one guitar player in the band. Regular, I always have bands with a second guitar player. Mm -hmm. So I have also to learn how to be as only one guitar player uh, exists uh, in the band. I have Especially to be life. double heavy, double whatever, but on the end, I started to like it so much, so right now, I can't even imagine to play with a second guitar player anymore in a band. Well, it was, it was, uh, in fact, you have a peculiar way and, and, and it's, it's your, when you listen to something played by you, we can, uh, you know, understand, okay, it's Valdemar playing and uh, it happened with Voodoo Cult, it happened also with the Grip Inc, especially with Group Inc, Grip Inc. And, um, can you imagine yourself doing something like that? I've seen a picture of you with Dave Lombardo. It's not so old, that picture. So it's from 2017, I believe. Do you still maintain contact with him and, and possibly would imagine oh, yeah. a new, yeah. a new project, a new project to, with, with Dave or, or, or any other mu musician that we already know? Yeah, this is, this is now a little bit more complicated to answer. First of all, um, when when Gus died, uh, we immediately tell to each other uh, there is no gripping without Gus because I mean each one of us three uh, had like a very very special way of playing, but only each one was a part of grip. Like when only one is missing, I can't imagine to be gripping without Dave. That also that when Dave came back uh, to Slayer. Um, Gus was thinking, let's make a grip uh, with another drummer. And I said, like, no, either we do it together or, or we're not doing it. And the uh, same decision was, uh, to, there's no group without Gus. But after years, we both started to think um, the love, the passion that we share with Group Inc. and how different the music was, uh, we should, we should continue with this, just also in honor for Gus. Um, but um, there is no way to replace Gus, but there is no way to find someone who can bring this quality of Gus. Gus was not only as a singer, as a voice very special, he was also as a frontman and as a, as a, as a character, very, very special person. And Either you have one or the second, but to have all together in one person that also fits to the group uh, style, we, we wish to to have something, but uh, we can't find until today anybody who, who we and, think uh, and, that would uh, feel uh, right. Can I ask you if you have any recordings that uh, are unedited or, uh, you know, released? from gripping with with everyone are there some songs that never came out is is, is yeah, it maybe. possible to know something mm, yeah the, the first demo but uh, no one of us i think has like still like something that could be good enough to release that was demo on four track or on eight track that is not comparable to anything that you do now digital and you can't remix those things because they exist only from 93 or 94. And uh, the only unreleased things that we had, we did uh, for, yeah, as a memory for Gus Chambers in uh, exact, um, what was it? 
2018, yes, hostage to heaven. Yeah, also, the good. idea of the cover is, as you see, this is uh, taken from a grave in Milan, this picture, and this chain is supposed to show like the heaven that uh, he's, uh, he's, the gas is stuck there and look down on us, but can can come back for us anymore. And those songs, that was the songs that were unreleased for Grip Inc. And that was in memory for Gus exactly 10 years after his death, uh, we, we released this album. And uh, and um, any any albums that that can be reissued again in, you know, on, uh, on vinyl? Do you believe that um, there are some we records? Have already, we have already all our records uh, on vinyl. Just could be that uh, they are already sold out. I don't know. Because, they are. Uh, they are because I, I can't find some that I need, and there aren't any. You know, for I have one. Five thousand euros. Joke. <laughs> wow. Hey man, you are working for these cocks. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but. Okay. Um, but just just to, to come to this point, I mean, I can tell you today, I couldn't tell you this five years ago, if there is anything that will be uh, released or that we we want to make it, in case even maybe maybe EP instrumental, like for example one song from this album, uh, Solidify, the Bok Juice. Many people was uh, asking us. So why you just don't do, because that was so crazy, uh, why you just don't this kind of music, like songs songs like this, this is still Grip Inc., even if it doesn't sound like Hostage to Heaven, but it still be Grip Inc. And um, as I say, uh, what is, it is. But what it will be, I can tell you today, if maybe next year, something under the name Grip Inc. will be released. You have to be sure that when something with this name Grip Inc. will come out, you will have 100% Grip Inc. inside. And even when that should be a new singer, it will be someone who brings Dave and me the feeling, yes, this is Grip Inc. again. Okay, so, oh my God. Um, so we... Uh... We are getting to our usual hour of interview. Let me tell you that, uh, on behalf of the Portuguese fans and the and the you know, as a producer, as a musician, thank you so much for having uh, us on Heavy Culture. And also, please come to Portugal again when possible because I want to see you playing live, hanging out, drink beer, wine, whatever, uh, just enjoying uh, this country. And uh, thank you so much for this interview. I, we have also some questions again from Brazil. I, I believe that the, they are the last ones. So again, thank you so much, Valdemar. It was a pleasure, a great pleasure to talk with you. It was a pleasure for me too. Thank you very much. My last saúde. Jorge, tem uma pergunta, Miguel. Vamos a isso, Jorge. Tens aí que ligar o microfone, Jorge. The last, uh, qual o álbum, qual o trabalho que ele destacaria, o um trabalho, o melhor é difícil dizer, né, o melhor, um álbum que ele destacaria, um trabalho como produtor, uma carta de visita, isso, como produtor, como, mus, como uh, uh, compositor, então tá, vamos okay. lá, músico, okay, compositor, so... uma carta okay, de visita, so... músico, Okay, so as a musician, as a musician, and also as a a composer and a connoisseur, uh, what could you tell us about? Imagine that you you could uh, highlight one record that you ever worked with uh, or worked on. One, what record would you choose? Uh, we know it's hard, but uh, one. No, it's, so, it's also unfair because you know. Um, even with start with grip, uh, each each one has a different uh, view. Each one was a, a, like a mirror of, of our feelings of what we was presenting in, in, in this time. Uh, maybe uh, 
incorporated was very special because we were also very close to, to break apart. And after uh, three years, we came back together and we have, uh, that was already 10 years of Group Inc. But we still have this fire inside after such a long time. And I remember that we've been rehearsing in my room in Dortmund, but the studio was like 20 kilometers away. So we rented a van for the drums and for all this equipment. And uh, then Dave and me was driving to the studio and uh, we were behaved like a, like a stupid uh, kids, like we've been 16 again. We opened the window, it was summer, and we started to scream at the street and then the people, METAL! HEAVY FUCK YOU! We're going to record an album! And we already, you know, like, we made so many albums in our past, but it was still like such a intense feeling to make uh, again the record together. So it's hard to say that that one was maybe the most special because I feel always I give to everyone, I give 100%, not 99, 100%. And even when something goes wrong, when something goes the way, that you're not happy with, it still, on the end, turn out the way that uh, when you forget about it. I think that each record that I made had something very, very special inside. Cool, cool. Respect. Okay. Respect. Okay. Okay, sure. so Val Valdemar, again, it was a, a, a pleasure. Uh, let's hope that uh, you, you have something new to release whenever you have to, you have time. Um, when you just know how many songs I regularly make each year, you know, like I we imagine. will be able to make Grip Inc. five records a year probably, but, uh, well, you know, this is at the other point when that starts once and you're always on tour, when you're always on the road. It was at least earlier, not as easy as it is today, that you can take laptop with you, that you can take the guitar on the bus, at, uh, in the in the 90s, that was impossible. That you have to have a much bigger bus and 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 quiet. You know, like there were bands already by this time that had like their own studio in the bus. But uh, well, they were selling also a little bit more records than than we did. Okay, and the, and we hope we hope that you are around to give us the best ever you have for the future whatever name the band can can have because we miss you we miss you your 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 special way to play uh, special thrash metal and thank I you so much miss this fucking stage <laughs> let's let's hit the stages and let's meet again and you know go crazy that's it thank you very yeah. much and uh, one more thank time you. One, one one thing that uh, you might uh, sound familiar to you. Muito obrigado. Muito obrigado. Muito obrigado. Muito obrigado, Valdemar. Solitia no Heavy Culture. Olha, uma hora é muito pouco. Uh, para falar tanta coisa. 30 anos de metal. Cara, a gente sai daqui com a sensação que não fez nenhuma pergunta para ele, né? É muita informação, é, é muita riqueza, né? É uma aula, tivemos aqui uma aulinha, uma breve aulinha do metal aí dos últimos 30 anos. Thank you, Valdemar. Thank Galera. Metal. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. bye. Pessoal, então, obrigado. Obrigado. Até na próxima. Ivan, Miguel. Eu saio daqui emocionado. Não posso ser mais nada. Como posso sair disso?